How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Anthem video and Bioware finally break the silence. Jesse the community manager, also known as Derekas on Reddit, the community manager for Bioware, decided it was time to respond to all the critique that had been going on. A very well written out post by Harrisix was the one that finally triggered the response. It wasn't very well worded, it wasn't toxic at all, it was on the money, on the spot and it pretty much covered the majority of how the community felt. Because of this, Jesse decided to come out and answer the points that he raised. Communication was the first thing he covered, pre-game release versus post-game release, and let's be honest here, everyone has noticed that there's been a stark difference in the level of communication. Before the release, everyone was responding to everything. Tweets were flying out like crazy, I made a ton of videos just covered by tweets. Now, it's almost impossible to find any. Well, here is the response to why. To start, he says, things used to be a lot friendlier here for the dev team members who normally don't talk on social channels or forums. They could answer questions, give information and know that they aren't going to have people getting upset at them. Why would a dev team member take time away from working on the next update to post when they know it's likely to be met with hostile replies or flamed because they can't answer other questions that players are asking? I don't mind posting here when things aren't so nice, but that's because it's my job. For the devs, it isn't their job. And I'd like to ask people to remember that when replying to them. When some people say, be nice or the devs will stop posting, it's 100% true. Be respectful and constructive with your feedback and more team members will reply. Now this is a two-pronged thing, right? I understand that people are frustrated, especially when things were all rosy, everyone was out, and now that things are bad, people are expecting responses, people are expecting answers to their questions, and well, things got quite hostile quite quickly. Just yesterday, in the Anthem Discord channel, things got completely and utterly out of hand, to the point where it became completely an utter hostile environment. I'm not joking, this actually happened and in the end moderators had to step in to calm things down and that made matters worse, it became almost complete anarchy. If you treat people bad, they simply won't respond. I remember a time when Destiny 2 was doing insanely bad and the developers actually were getting death threats sent to them and Activision had to step in and actually guarantee their safety coming from home to work and work to home. It's a goddamn job, it's a goddamn game. When people take it to that level and have to threaten people's lives over a goddamn game, I think there's bigger issues here with those people, right? I think we can all get that. I can also understand that people are, you know, genuinely frustrated at the level of how the game is and when things go sour, people are going to complain. It's natural, but that's what the community managers are there for. The developers are not there to listen to all the bad complaints. They're there to make sure the game works. But if things are rosy and they have the time, well, they get the confidence to come out and speak a bit more. Because they know if they say something about anything, they're not going to be hounded by the next 300 people asking what the fuck is going on. Simple as that, really. And if you want to continue a two-way transparent relationship, well, the cost of that is don't be a dick. That's pretty much it, really. You know, there's a nice saying, treat others how you would treat yourself. If you treat yourself like an arsehole, well, that's on you and that's fair enough. Good luck to you. But if you want other people to treat you with respect, you treat them with respect. Ask the questions nicely, in a respectful manner, with criticism. Constructive criticism is always appreciated, right? But as long as it's not toxic, Turning around and saying you fucking idiots, you can't even fucking code, that's not going to get a response now is it? But if you turn around and say, hey, look, we understand that there's problems, but can someone please explain how these were missed? Can someone please explain as to what led to this problem? Same exact question, just one is worded nicer than the other. And you know what? The second option probably would have got a response. Second point was aggravating the community by acknowledging trivial things over major issues. Jesse goes on to say, I have been acknowledging issues that aren't major ones you mentioned, but that's because I can quickly check in on those and work with the team to see how fast we can get them fixed. I also report major issues, but until I get word back on them, there is nothing else I can say, which is entirely true by the way, he is only a community manager. If he's not being told anything, or if he's being told that you cannot respond on this, he can't do it. Neither can the developers, neither can Ben Irving, neither can Mike Gamble, no one can. If it's coming from a high up that you cannot relay this information just yet, 
that's it. They can't do it. No matter how much you cry about it, that's it. And this doesn't just apply to Bioware and EA. This happens in every company. Hell, it even happens in the place I'm working right now. So it's a standard practice. Sometimes things just can't be said until it's ready. Issues like Masterworks, Embers, not dropping, I can quickly bring to the attention of the team, and we can get it fixed. I think it's better that I address the things I can as quickly as I can instead of nothing at all. Which is a good point. There are certain things that can be fixed quickly, and if it's within his power to actually get those rules rolling, which like the Embers, it definitely is because it was unintentional, and by bringing it to the attention of the people that need to know, it was fixed a hell of a lot quicker than other stuff. Something like this is pretty good. Now I do get the frustration about other major issues, especially like the loot being kept quiet. He continues, Loot though, all I can do is point out what the studio leadership share on the channels, which is exactly what I said a moment ago. They are very aware of all the conversations going on around loot, and when they have more details to share, they will. Now the only thing I will say about this, is that I personally wish they will have a thread at the very top, one that would say issues acknowledged by Bioware, and in there it will basically list all the issues that people are responding, all the issues that people are reporting, in a list form, so people can know that their issue has been heard. I have tweeted this out to Jesse as well, Hopefully he got it, and hopefully at some point we can actually see this on the Reddit. But I do believe something like this would benefit both them and us. It would prevent the same things coming up over and over again, and it will also help those that feel that they're not being listened to by looking at that post, and if their concern is actually in the list and at the attention of Bioware, they know that Bioware is aware of the situation. Now the biggest problem here is when they don't say anything. They remain silent, people feel disrespected, ignored, even though it's clear that they are not being ignored, people want to be acknowledged. It's a human trait, it's standard facts, and it's something that all games companies seem to do badly. They stay silent for so long, and then when they finally come out, they think it's all good, and this is wrong. So I believe in this regard, there is a hell of a lot that can be improved, and by creating a Reddit thread, which basically lists all the issues that the community is mentioning, the community can check this list and know that despite the fact that there's problems here, they are being heard, they are being listened to, and Bioware is aware of what's going on. So I think this should be something that should definitely come into place. And it's definitely something Bioware can definitely improve on to make this transition of transparency that bit smoother and that bit more relaxed. He continues, Now for the EA help tweet about Quickplay. The reason we ask for this information is to help us track down the remaining issues players are experiencing in Quickplay in one location and to get more specifics on what we're doing when they encountered the issue. Having all of that information helps the team track down the bugs faster, which means they're more likely to be fixed in the next update, which means they can move on to other parts of the patch sooner. And this is exactly what I said in my previous video. Now every company does this, this is actually standard practice, and it's good practice by the way. Because QA won't catch everything, sure, with the quick play, it's definitely one that's a prominent bug, but what they're trying to do is narrow it down. Because eventually, there's going to be a correlation, a pattern as to what is triggering this, and it will help them narrow it down and fix the bug, and it will help it quicker. The Division has been doing this from the very beginning. Hamish, every single state of the game almost, turns around and says, if you have a bug, you know, go to the forums and report it. And people do that in the plenty. They were doing it consistently in the Division 1, and they will do it with Division 2. I'm doing it with the Division 2. Same thing with Destiny. It happens all the time. It's standard practice. It's good practice. It helps the game get better. So why is it a problem when EA said this, sure, I can understand the frustration because it's been going on for some time, but at this point, let's be real here, the people that are hating on this generally are just looking for anything to hate. I mean, at this point, I will go as far as saying, if a developer at Bioware sneezed, I'm half expecting a, oh my god, big news, Bioware developer sneezes, this is gonna melt the company down. I mean, this is what I'm expecting at this point, and then everyone's gonna lose their fucking minds. This is what's gonna happen. Or, Bioware scene shopping in Morrison's. Oh my god, this is gonna be a massive meltdown to the community. I mean, this is basically what's happening. They can do anything. Just step outside the house, and as long as they 
stepped on something, it's newsworthy to attack the game. Come on guys, it doesn't need to be that way. The next point was quite a good one, not learning from previous mistakes. He says, I'm not going to comment on the first two points because I didn't work on Andromeda and I know how some players feel about EA. Well, it's not some, it's pretty much everyone. But I do want to talk about you addressing how we're handling feedback. For feedback, we made a large number of changes based on what players have told us. Not wanting to run to the forge every time to launch the expedition, we added the ability to launch anywhere in Fort Tarsus. That was because of player feedback. We wanted to see visually loot drop from bosses and strongholds, added because of player feedback. If you're talking about feedback on loot in general, and I'm pretty sure you are, I already said that the team is discussing and that more will be likely be shared in coming days. So there you have it guys. So we should be hearing some news maybe by this weekend or early next week hopefully. They did say a coming day so keep an eye out for that. I know everyone wants to know when but I don't have the answer. But we do not ignore feedback from players. Sometimes it just takes a bit longer as things need to be discussed for a longer time. We don't want to say something we can't do or give incorrect information. Like Chad Robertson said in a tweet, we aren't happy where Lou is either. So know that it's high on our priority list. Now this is another prime example. Chad Robertson said that over the next couple months or few months, this will be addressed. Now he didn't mean that it's going to take three months for it to be addressed. What he actually said was that over the months coming, loot will be tweaked and tweaked and tweaked until it hits the point where both player and Bioware is happy. And that's pretty much it. You know, they're going to be doing incremental changes, changes that will hopefully benefit the player, but not break the loot economy. Sure, it's a PvE only game. I get that. But if you get every single piece of loot within two weeks, what have you got to play for? You start leaving. At the same time, Bioware doesn't want you to leave, they want you to remain in the game. So, the direction that they've gone now where they've cut the drop rates completely is bad and people are leaving. So they can clearly see this isn't the answer. So incremental changes to drop rates is something that they're going to be doing over the coming months until they have perfected it. When it comes to the scarding feedback, he was pretty upset by this because as a community manager, feedback bug reports, posts on the forums like the summon the loot update are things that you strive for. Engaging with your community, talking with your community and being one with your community is what a good community manager does and Jesse has been doing this for the most part. People have been complaining about inscriptions so they made a whole complete write up of inscriptions which was again something driven by the community team. Patch notes, helping out with issues and so much more is stuff that basically come from the community with the feedback so they feedback is never discarded and it is something that they won't do because all feedback is valuable feedback unless it's completely toxic then it can get the hell out lack of content i'm not going into this too much as it's areas i don't have control over or i don't have the exact info on how the team is addressing know that i relay the feedback from the community to the team on all of these issues the team is aware they are doing a lot of work to address these concerns. And this is the case. DMG, Cosmo, Yannick, The Works, they all relay this information to the correct people. It's down to those people in the end to make sure that it's acted upon. But with the way Anthem is, I am pretty sure they are acting upon it. But as long as people remain toxic and unfriendly, the people behind the doors that are actually affecting these new content they won't come out and talk to us because the moment they do, we're on their throats trying to strangle them. So it's a two-way system. Yes, we want more content. We want more info on more content. But if you want that stuff, you know, you've, you've got to do your part as well. Turning a good game bad. All I'll say is that Anthem is here to stay. Do we have a lot of work to do to fix parts of the game? Yes, and the team is committed to making improvements and releasing new content. So as you can see here, I think his response was a really, really good one. I think his response to the points made were clear, concise as to the limitations. But in the end, it boils down to one thing. Yes, they know the game is broken. Yes, they know the game is bugged. Yes, they know there is a lot of problems. But they are committed and here to stay. They are continuing with the communication. But yes, it's true. Communication has slowed down. People have slowed down in responding to tweets. Just the other day, I saw Jonathan Warner tweet, this is how you get yourself blocked. 
the person that sent him a tweet was extremely vile and toxic. It was quite disturbing to read. I mean, no one has a right to send anyone anything like that. You have no right. And if you want to send stuff like that, well, you can, you guarantee that you will never be heard. And that's on you. But if you want to create a two-way system, you need to open that dialogue, not go on the full offensive. And that's pretty much why we've had a complete blackout silence. We've seen community managers from EA, community managers from Bioware, stepping in and making comments and, you know, responding to people. But it's been radio silent. And this is why. Because these people don't have to listen to everyone cursing them, everyone harassing them. And quite honestly, I am pretty sure they've even received threats. It didn't take long for Bungie devs to get this, so I'm pretty sure at this point people are doing it here, considering all the hatred that's going around. So guys, you let me know what you think. I mean, I'm happy Jesse came out and explained everything as to why. It's now put everything into the open as to why they've been away, what they're doing, why they're responding to certain things. I do believe, and will reiterate what I said earlier, the way they handle community concerns is not right. There is a lot to improve here. And simply putting a Reddit thread that's pinned to the top that says Bioware confirmed issues and then you open that thread and you see all the listed issues that people have been reporting that have been noted and brought to the attention of the relevant people. That would be a massive step forward and would definitely put a lot of people at ease to know that they've been heard, right? Because everyone just wants to be heard. They just want to know that their concerns are being listened to and not ignored. It's not just a case of, we've got your money, we're out of here. They want to know that, you know, their investment means something. And something like this would go a long way into proving that. So Jesse, if you are watching this, I really hope this is something that you will implement on the actual forum because it will definitely make your life and everyone else's life that little bit better. Right guys, let me know in the comment section below what you think of the comments, what you think of Jesse's responses, and yeah, hopefully we can start to get the dialogue we had pre-release back again, because it was nice being able to communicate with the devs, and it was nice being able to communicate with the producers. That goodwill seems to have been lost between the community and the team, and I hope that that connection, that commitment, that togetherness, I mean the whole, the whole basis of Anthem is strong alone, stronger together, right? As a community and as a whole, we are stronger together. So instead of being toxic and being completely against and trying to go full damnation, let's change that. Let's start being more constructive with our criticisms. Be, crit you know, be critical, but be constructive. And then based on that, you'll soon find that people will come out of the woods and say, you know what, we hear your problem, the suggestion you've suggested may work, but there's X, Y, and Z that we need to consider. Or they'll just come out and say, you know what, that's a really good idea. We'll put it to the table and see how it goes. These will happen. But in order for this to happen, we need to do our part as well and create that dialogue again. Right, guys, that's all for me for this video. Until next time, remain legend.